Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about The Equalizer Season 3, Episode 14. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, obviously, this episode, I mean, there's a lot of in these shows that obviously play parallel to uh, real life, but this one in particular, because wasn't that the whole DeSantis? DeSantis, was it DeSantis or DeSantos? The whole Florida, someone from Florida doing the whole thing of sending, wasn't it immigrant people to, wasn't it Martha's Vineyard, I believe? It's, it's the exact same thing. I was like, oh, interesting. I was like, this episode had to be, I, was, I mean, probably had to be written and probably like filmed and stuff like that specifically like pretty soon after like all that went down. That doesn't even feel like that was that long ago. Obviously, I'm getting to this episode late, but I'm like, that wasn't that long ago. So they must have, like, it, the episode must have been really topical at the time when they, like, I mean, st still topical because it's part of, like, that larger immigration conversation. But at the heart of this episode, there is a congresswoman, um, Elena Acevedo, who is, you know, fighting for um, immigrant rights in, in, in the U.S., and she's someone that took in um, the was it the Perez family and sadly she ends up getting shot and later on she dies from her wounds and uh, the suspect is uh, the husband that she, uh, she uh, took in named Jaime and his wife Marisol doesn't believe he did it despite it's like hey he had blood on him but he's the one that called 911 but he didn't think anyone would believe him understandably so considering like the way they were kind of treated and used the way they were used of like, oh, they were kind of like a political stunt. That's always a conversation. Like, I think it is such a sad thing that the immigrant conversation has always been a political one. It's one of those things where I feel like, because so, there's some things that are political that shouldn't be. They should be very, like, human policy. But I'm, I'm also naive on the subject. I'm I'm a very, like, optim I'm sure I'm like a very naive liberal, I'm sure, in, in, in those regards. But it is a thing of, like, I just wish there was a... Because I don't know. I don't have access to all the data. I can understand someone's point of view, which this episode does tackle of, hey, like, the immigrant situation, like, causes issues that do affect me. It's not like I hate... I mean, yes, there are the people who are just like, oh, you're from... Get out of my country. They're here to take our jobs, type of thing. It does affect people, but I do like this episode does bring up the... I mean, I'm sure the point's been made, but I'd never really heard that point brought up before I mean, like I said it could have easily been made before but it's like hey like someone helping fix the immigration situation of like legalizing it so that people in immigrant situations can actually get jobs and not have to take like jobs where people are paying them on the cheap just because it's like hey you're cheap labor it's like if they're able to get regular jobs they won't be taking those cheap jobs and the people who are undercutting your business because they're hiring cheap labor it, they won't be able to hire that cheap labor so it benefits you everyone benefits from it these uh people who have come to this country are able to get legitimate uh well-paying jobs and not just have to scrape by doing like the bare minimum being hired for the only jobs they can get and it benefits you so i, I thought that was such an interesting once again the point's probably been made before but i've just never heard like trying to like be like hey everyone can win in this situation not that but maybe that's a um a conversation piece that's probably come up before but either way robin doesn't think that jaime did it so obviously her and the team are investigating and because obviously she had a lot of political enemies because a lot of people didn't like her because it's like hey some people loved her some people hated her that's just also modern politics it's uh, basically what Mel ended up saying in the episode where you used to be able to politically disagree with someone and it was not an issue. Hey, you could have a drink afterwards. It's like, yeah, but now it's like, oh, if you disagree with someone politically, they're your enemy. It is that thing. Like, because obviously it's like, I think you also kind of always forget to talk. We, I think we always talk in extremes. And what I mean by that, it's like, I think it's the extremists on each side that kind of represent that. I don't. Not everyone falls into those extremist ter elements, but they are the ones who are kind of the loudest, who will wrangle in other people who might not be on the more extremist side. They might be on the lesser or more moderate side in some regards, you know. And and that speaks on both sides of the spectrum, on on the political spectrum in that regard. 
But uh, I mean, that's why you also don't talk politics with the fam, you know, because that's because it's such it is that much of a divisive subject. I mean, that's why I don't like talking politics. I, I dabble a little here and there, but it's also because I'm I'm ignorant. I'm naive. Like I can't really. I can give my perspective on something with a limited knowledge, but I will always admit I have a very limited view on certain political subjects and stuff like that. Like even even immigration subject. Like I said, I, I'm naive. I wish there was like a more. I don't think it's it shouldn't be. Immigrants shouldn't be demonized the way people, especially this country which was built off the backbone of immigrants. You know so. Obviously, I'm ever a lot of countries have uh, the immigration situation, but it's like I, I'm also coming from like, hey, a very U.S. centric viewpoint because I I'm, I'm not well versed worldwide like how a lot of other countries handle that um, topic. But you know, the U.S. worldview is kind of the only view I kind of have. That's why I have that per perspective in that regard. But either way, tangents and all that aside. Getting back to the point I was making before I went on that whole uh, diatribe, was like, yeah, she has, Elena has a long list of enemies, and looking into it further, um, some things had come up, like, obviously, the wife, uh, Jaime's wife, Marisol, her and Carmen were seen selling a necklace of uh, Elena's. And it didn't look good because, especially because Carmen, who is who is an advocate, who is, you know, she's going through the process herself. She had gotten to this country three years ago and she still hasn't gotten an interview to try and, you know, become a citizen and stuff. It's like it, it shouldn't be that lengthy of a process, you know, but it's once again, it's just another angle of yeah, I'm ignorant on the like the ins and outs and the red tape of it all. But she helps people who are trying to find housing or in very similar circumstances herself. Um, but Elena, I mean, not Elena, um, Carmen has a rap sheet because in Venezuela she was arrested for fraud. I was like, oh, because I was like, oh, is she really running a scam? And was Marisol just not aware of it? Because Marisol did seem like almost like a, wait, you were arrested? But maybe she was already aware. But it turns out, no, Carmen... At least, it seems like Carmen is on the up and up. It's just, she's like, back in her country, she was um, a staunt, like, protester, and she protested, like, a lot of, like, corruption in the government, so they created trumped-up charges just to arrest, arrest her, so that's when she ended up, like, getting away from the country. It's like, right, like, they can make stuff up just to arrest me because I'm pushing back against what they're doing, and, you know, because she, talk, she had talked about it, obviously, um... I think yeah, I think she's from Venezuela, like the Perez's are, and it's like yeah, with everything that's going on in their country, and they, obviously it's 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 that conversation. It always comes back to of I love my country. It just has its issues. I think that's something a lot of people can feel about their respective countries, you know. Because it turns out like Elena's the one that gave them the necklace because they needed. Uh, I can't remember why. Uh, I think it was like specifically Marisol needed the money. And also the all the money that's in Carmen's accounts because people are giving it to her directly to deposit and stuff, uh, the contributions and stuff like that, just because it's easier to uh, get the money, like for uh, families to get the money through her rather than kind of having to go through the system because they don't have any, I think anything official to try and be able to get the money out if they try. So I think that's why the money kind of gets sent like, directly into her account. So once again, everything seemed like Carmen might be like. A scammer, there might be some fraud stuff going on there, but it seems like she's on the up and up. It... And another angle to the episode was this uh, guy who was very outspoken against Elena. The fact is, he posted up at her house every night talking about, like, obviously, like, once again, very nasty about the immigration uh, situation and was posted up at Elena's place every night saying how calling her a poisonous I mean literally made a sign about her being a poisonous snake and all that and especially the way he handled it like when Harry and Mel came to talk to him I mean obviously it's just kind of like well I'm not going to talk to you like you don't got a badge or anything but it's like hey we're just looking into this thing like just the fact is you were very staunch staunch like person who like hated Elena for her policies and stuff 
And then, like, he kind of got a little, like, especially at the gun range, because even Harry was like, oh, maybe, maybe we should wait for him in, like, the parking lot or whatever, and ends up, like, he ends up swinging the gun to Mortimer. Like, he probably wasn't going to shoot, but it was, like, the fact is your first thought was, like, you're frustrated, and to get someone to back down, you're going to wave a gun in their face, which was very, very irresponsible and very stupid of you. So that Mel had every right to kick your ass. Then the other guys are up there pointing their guns. It's like, okay, we don't have to escalate to this. But Mel proceeded to take everyone down, and Harry got used as a human shield. And they love to kind of distract the guy long enough. Mel and Harry have an argument, and I... I wonder, is that true, where Harry was like, oh yeah, you asked an ex-boyfriend to install some, uh, surveillance cameras or something like that, and then the person hacked into them, and I was like, is that true, or is that based on, like, because obviously they had the little back and forth, so and so, I was like, oh, I should have never married you, marrying you was the biggest mistake of my life, and Harry ended up, like, just, the guy was distracted long enough, Harry took him down, and she, and Mel was like, you're watching, re, uh, you're re, uh, watching reruns of Moonlighting again, aren't you, he's like, oh, the show was so much better before they got together, I was like, oh, I don't, I feel like I've heard of the show Moonlighting, but I don't think I've ever seen it before. It sounds familiar. So I wonder, is that all stuff taken from, like, specifically that line of, like, oh, uh, surveillance camera and it got hacked into it? It felt like that might be real, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know the show Moonlighting enough to know that. Or maybe it's, like, not that exact argument, but, like, that style of what they just did was in the vein of Moonlighting, so... I also love that line of like, oh, uh, the show was so much better before they got together. So I guess it's one of those, oh, will they, won't they type of character situation. And then it's like, oh, I mean, like, because there's some shows that have that where it's like, oh, yeah, like, part of what made, like, something work so well is like, oh, they never, they, will they, won't they is a big part of it. Now they finally did. It's like, oh, it kind of changes the dynamic a little bit. I, I can see that because other shows have kind of been in that. I've never been in a situation where I felt like, oh, God, the show was so much better before they got together. I've never been in that situation, but I could see someone kind of feeling like that because it creates this interesting tension and um, very specific like style of writing you probably can do for with the story versus when the characters finally do get together. Like I'm just sure the writing and style and just the stories you tell end up being very different in that regard. But tangents and all that aside. But yeah, Clay had nothing to do with um, Elena's murder. He just was a staunch, like I said, like um, person about trying to get her out of office. That was his way to kind of deal with her. He didn't want to kill her. And the points I brought up earlier about his his issue uh, issue with immigrants and Dante's counterpoint about like it's a thing. If if Elena's policies had gotten the way she wanted them to, then it would have been a win win for everybody type of situation. So I thought it was such an interesting like uh, development too when we find out like okay Elena's place was bugged and it turns out there was like secret messages from um, Lacey because it turns out that she referenced the sign that Clay had left but Clay had only just put those signs out there like recently and it's like wait Lacey says she hadn't stopped by Elena's house or it did seem suspicious it's like she messed up by referencing that early on I guess like trying to I guess it makes sense because it was something she saw so recently that it like stuck in her mind when it came to like anti Elena stuff but she didn't realize that was something that was super super new the way it was so she didn't really think about it too much of like she didn't realize it was going to be kind of her undoing Sadly, she doesn't have to worry about dealing with everything because she's dead before they can even question her because they start wondering, like, okay, is Lacey behind all this? Why would she be doing this? Because one, of, there's a congressman, uh, was it Walter Gray, who used to be a former C, uh, FBI agent. He handles surveillance and stuff like that. So he surveillances people, blackmails them, and basically forces them to kind of go the way he wants them to, but, like, politically. Like, one of, like, Elena's supporters on a, a immigration bill she was coming up with uh, ended up, uh, oppo like, that person was on her side and then opposed it, and it's because they were being blackmailed by Greg. And it turns out Lacey was in the same situation, so she was planting a bug in Elena's house and got caught, and that's when the whole thing happened. And uh, Lacey ended up shooting her. It's like, wow, I... Mm, 
I figure it's one of those things where it's like you look at people early on in the show and you're like, well, you definitely seem like there's a look on her face when after her mail talk where you're like, uh, it seemed like you might have something to hide. Wasn't expecting, I don't know, it didn't click in my head. Like, I figured she had something to hide, but I didn't think she was going to end up being the killer. And obviously, this is a larger thing because it turns out she was working for Gray. The, what he had over her was Lacey was stealing from Elena's. Um, she was embezzling money from Elena's, Elena. So you're like, interesting. So she got caught. And it's kind of like, oh, I'm really sad. And once again, it's that thing, too, when you find out the person's a bad guy, it makes all the things of like, oh, that person was a great person. It's like, yeah, but you were stealing from him, and ultimately you killed I mean, it was an accident. You didn't want, you guys struggled over the gun because she was trying to call the police because obviously if the word had gotten out about what she had done, it would have destroyed her political career, you know, so her life, her life would have been destroyed. So she was just trying to stop Elena, and they struggled over the gun. And it, it's sad it turned out that way. And they ended up killing Lacey because she's a loose end. Especially the moment, like, Mel ended up questioning her. I'm, I'm sure that immediately put a target on um, Lacey's back. But luckily, because of uh, all these uh, bugs meant to, like, blackmail people, there was a recording of the night that uh, Elena died. So it proved that Lacey's the one that did it and... Uh, Jaime was ultimately released, and so uh, Gray, as well as his um, aide, the one who was, ha was in possession of those recordings, ended up going to jail. Because I guess, like, um, either it was either it was Gray that did it himself, or specifically it was his aide. Either way, they're both, I think, going down for the whole situation. And Jaime and his wife were um, reunited, and Carmen is helping find them some housing. So it is sad that. You know, luckily it had a happy ending, but it's sad that this situation should have never, it should have never turned into this to begin with, you know, so, but, you know, all's well that ends well type of situation, so. Another side of the episode is we have Vi helping out a student of hers, because she sees something in his artwork where he has, like, these very, like, happy family photos, but there's always someone in the shadows that's in the dark, in the back, doing graffiti. The storyline didn't 100% go the way I thought it was, because the moment he brought up, like, you know, like, you could tell something was bothering him, and Vi got advice from Delilah and, um, Robin to look into it, and I initially was thinking, especially when he introduced the brother element, that I'm like, oh, did his brother die, and he's still dealing with it? It's like, no. Turns out they are from a... Because at first when uh, Vi had caught him leaving the house he was supposed to go into, I was like, why would he lie about... Is he lying about where he lives? Like, is he trying to cover it up? I'm like, what's up with that? And did he feel embarrassed? Like, maybe he didn't live in the best of place. It turns out he's in a foster situation because him and his... He has a brother named Darius who their parents died in a car crash. They were put in a foster care system. But the, ha the previous house they were in... Their dad drank a lot, and he was abusive, and they had to get away from him, and Darius, like, did, but when it came time to run, like, Robbie froze because he ran into their dad the night they were going to run away, and so Darius had to leave. Luckily, uh, Robbie was able to get out of that situation and put in a new foster home, a good one, but the problem is now his brother has no idea how to find him, and he has no idea how to find his brother either, so... Vi wanted to help, and Rob suggested, like, right, like, Dante could help, because taggers are put in the system, like, their their records kept, but there's no guarantee, and, but ultimately, it did work out in that regard, and as Vi says later on, it's like, right, this family, you know, putting the fam reuniting families left and right, Rob helping in her regard, Vi helping in hers, it's, it is beautiful that, um, I mean, like, it, it could have easily not gone that way because it's like, it, there's no guarantee it was going to work out, but luckily it did. And ultimately, uh, Robbie's foster family's um, taken Darius in, too, so it's nice to know that those brothers are finally reunited, especially after everything they've been through. I thought that was, that was beautiful, and you're just kind of like, it's just kind of like, yeah, there's sad circumstances. Obviously, like, the Elena of it all, like, probably it, it is a sadder situation because it's like, well, murder was involved, but... Darius and Robbie being separated, obviously just as heartbreaking, but once again, it had it, that story has more of a happy ending than an Elena thing, because obviously uh, Jaime and, you know, uh, Marisol being reunited, like, them, like, you know, there's a silver lining to that story that they're together, and Jaime was cleared, whereas, like, you know, so it's just it, sad circumstances all around is what I'm getting at, so... And then finally, there is another little angle to this episode, and that's Dante trying to find Lolo, the guy who shot 
Well, at least it's most likely responsible for shooting Manny, but uh, Dante hasn't been able to find him, which is interesting. You would think that'd be a little easier, but then at the end he gets called by um, another cop being like, yo, this is our jurisdiction, so back off, which immediately you're like, okay, the fact is I can't find this guy, and all of a sudden I get a call. So either one of two things. One, he's going to end up being like a, like he's um, somebody's informant, so they're trying to protect him type of situation, because this might be part of a larger thing of your your investigation will impede um, a large-scale in investigation to kind of take down this gang or something. So that's probably going to be a major thing. Or... There's some corrupt cops protecting him. Like it feels like the story. I'm going to lean more towards the former, but maybe the latter is something to be considered as well. Like the fact that you go out of your way to be like, "Yo, back off," feels like it's more so like, "Hey, you, I, we don't want you screwing up our investigation, detective." Because your thing of like, "Hey, uh, trying to put a uh, an attempted killer behind bars." Yeah, that's fine and dandy, but there's a larger, we're going after a larger prey here. He's a small fish in a larger pond that we're trying to take down. So that feels like it's more likely, but like I said, still got to keep op uh, open the possibility that this might be a corrupt cop thing, but we'll see. Very interested to ultimately see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.